Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our demo for Iron Worker. Uh, so I'm Paul. I work at IronIO as a developer evangelist. So I'm going to walk you guys through a simple program for sending uh, emails after compiling them into a little template. Um, and this is just a simple use case for a real-world kind of uh, way you want to use Iron Worker. So uh, I guess first things first, uh, what is Ironworker? Ironworker, uh, if you're unfamiliar, um, you can navigate over to this uh, GitHub repository, Docker Worker. So click this guy, and uh, to get started, you'll just need to go down here, and uh, oh, it looks like they changed the sidebar here, but uh, yeah, you'll just copy uh, clipboard for the repository. And then open your favorite uh, terminal. So let me increase the size of this. Uh, and go here, and you'll just do a git clone and then uh, the name of a Docker worker. So it'll download a bunch of content. While that's happening, uh, I can describe to you why you'd want to use this type of system. So uh, the short version is it's a high throughput, uh, high availability uh, you know, piece of infrastructure in the cloud that automatically uh, makes synchronous jobs into asynchronous jobs. So in the case of sending an email, um, you know, if I had coded this in Ruby by hand, uh, I might send, say, 10,000 emails at once to all my uh, subscribers that I've selected. Uh, if that job fails, then it's up to me personally to figure out, uh, you know, what went wrong, where it went wrong, and then to go into my database or wherever else I'm storing that information and make sure things are uh, set up again so the email can send properly in the future. Um, when you're using a worker, uh, all of your tasks are kind of quantized into uh, these small atomic bits, uh, and they're all run in parallel. So, um, you know, a job that sends 10,000 emails may take a couple hours to uh, assemble the emails and process the emails. Uh, with Iron Worker, uh, you can basically kind of scale things up uh, as much as you want based on your uh, computing infrastructure. And uh, one of the ways we do that is with Docker. So that's why we've got this repository, Docker Worker. Um, the default free option, if you want to uh, mess with this, uh, offers a Docker image that I think is limited to 320 megabytes of RAM um, and you know some amount of CPU power. Uh, if you want more power out of the system, uh, you, you can contact our sales team. But uh, by default, you get a concurrency of up to five workers running at once for any piece of code. So, uh, you know, the intro steps here that I'm going to skip are actually just uh, getting Docker Worker installed, um, making sure you have the Iron CLI tool installed. Um, so, you know, if you had not run this already, you would just uh, copy this uh, script. Uh, go over here, paste it in. Um, I've already run this, so I'm not going to do that again to my computer. Um, and then, yeah, basically just exactly what we already did here, uh, you know, git clone, uh, GitHub, Docker Worker. So uh, in this case, I'm going to do a demo for everybody here in Ruby uh, with a simple email script. So click into Ruby. Um, and I can see there's, you know, basically three big commands. Um, I think Docker's... Uh, you know, tagline is something like uh, build, ship, deploy. Um, I, I, I like to think our tagline is something more like uh, build, test, deploy. Um, I think Docker is into the shipping thing because that's kind of like what their logo is all about. So, uh, yeah, basically that's what we're doing here. So basically we're, we're building our file in this first command, which I'll show you in a second, and I'll explain what all these arguments mean in a few. Um, then the second command that we're going to run here uh, is actually testing locally. Uh, how our worker runs. So uh, this is really nice because the same exact code that's running in production, uh, you're able to test very easily on your local machine. And then uh, basically we're just packaging it up and deploying it uh, in this third command. So uh, three simple steps. Uh, cool. So let me navigate to my Docker worker here. So I think I have a repository already up. And let's take a peek here. So uh, there's some basic files here. Uh, the big one is basically just my code is represented by uh, this hello.rb 
you know, chunk right here. So if I open that guy up, uh, you know, we can see exactly, whoops, we can see what this program is doing. So uh, there's some cruft at the top just requiring some libraries. Uh, then basically what we're doing is, uh, you know, reading from the payload file. Uh, it's usually, it can be anything, but uh, generally you want to send your payloads as JSON. That's a pretty uh, standard way to serialize information and exchange it. Um, and then basically we're building an email uh, array. So if there's multiple emails included in that JSON uh, file, then uh, we want to send an, e an email to each one of those uh, profiles. So uh, in this case, this is just doing a curl command to a mailgun account. Um, I'll be killing this API key <laughs> after this phone call. Uh, Word to the wise, you should not uh, include API keys directly in your code if you're going to be uh, saving this code or uploading it uh, and it's going to be shared. Um, the preferred way to do that is with environment variables. Uh, and I'll show you how to, uh, you know, stash those guys inside a Docker uh, worker as well soon. Um, but basically, you can see if everything goes correctly, uh, we should uh, be sending a pretty cool message to, uh, you know, the email that's in our file. So. If I open up hello.payload.json, uh, I've got an email and uh, it's sending to stevez at thatmightbe.com. This is a domain that I own. I <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. I highly recommend that you also email um, domains that you own directly, uh, so you know you aren't bugging other people. Cool. So in this case, uh, the only bit of code that I really need to check that's uh, making uh, a call here correctly is this key value. So I, I grabbed that from uh, my Mailgun profile. So if I go to Mailgun and then uh, Domains here and then click on this uh, 2pp.pw domain, this is the domain I'll be sending from, uh, then I'll just want to grab this API key and uh, paste it into my uh, profile. So. This is the same key that's already in there. Um, great, that's all up to date. Uh, the next API key that I need uh, to make, make this whole machine kind of uh, start working for me is from my uh, IronIO account. So I can go to uh, hud.iron.io uh, and it'll take me to this same page that I'm on already. It'll add the slash dashboard. And I've created this uh, live demo uh, project. If you haven't created any projects yet and you want to start fresh, uh, you could also create a new project. Um, but basically, I'll just uh, click this credentials icon and it'll hopefully, yep, there we go, it'll show me my credentials here and I'll just download a JSON file. So I've already done that, um, but let's uh, just do it again. It'll just create a little clone here. Um, and then in my project, I just want to copy that file over. So. Uh, you know, copy from my profile in downloads, iron.json, um, place that in the current directory. So, cool. Now we've got my key in the current directory for iron. I've got my key for mailgun. Um, I'm ready to test my code to make sure everything's working. And, uh, you know, in this case, if I had any uh, libraries that I needed to use that were external, in addition to the iron libraries that I already installed, uh, I would just want to include those guys in my gem file. So if I open up my gem file here, uh, these are just the simple libraries that uh, I'm using for iron, uh, my hello.rb here. Uh, you can see these are the exact same libraries that are being required. Uh, so that's all good. Uh, I should be covered. Uh, first step uh, in this process is bundling those libraries, I guess what some people call vendoring, uh, into our worker. So uh, I can basically just follow the instructions on this page here, uh, copy these guys in. So, um, so uh, this just did a lot of stuff really quick. Um, let's kind of break down each piece of this. Uh, Docker run RM is basically saying, all right, we're going to run our Docker image um, and we're going to remove the image after we're done. Uh, this dash V and uh, dash W uh, kind of segment is basically saying take the current working directory, uh, mount it as a volume inside of Docker, and uh, make that the standard directory that you operate from anytime the doc 
the Docker image gets executed. Uh, and then Iron Ruby dev is basically just a very small uh, Iron Ruby uh, image that has a bundler installed. Uh, and then this bundle install standalone clean is basically just using that gem file to download all our libraries and vendor them into our Docker image. So if I type ls here, um, you can see I've got this snazzy bundle directory. That's basically what just happened. It added that bundle directory locally. And uh, now if I try and run my code, I should be able to pull uh, those libraries from this same directory. And uh, what this is doing is it's, uh, I don't know if I'm going to anger any, uh, <laughs> any like, uh, purists, but this gets you pretty close to an immutable type of infrastructure. So, um, you know, the one way to do this, if you wanted true immutability, would be to, uh, you know, edit this Docker file. Um, you could bundle your libraries in through this as well. Well, um, but in this case, just to make life easy, uh, make life very similar to how you're used to developing, uh, we've bundled things in this way. Um, cool. Now let's test that our email program is working. Um, so I'll copy this guy. And uh, let me just open our, you can see that we've added this environment variable payload file, uh, hello payload.json. Um, you can also, uh, you know, and it, similar to iron.json, you can store your files locally as uh, your keys, I guess, per se, for a mail gun, uh, as a local JSON file and load that key in that way, or you could load an environment variable in this exact same way. So basically, um, all that's changed here is we've added this environment variable, uh, and we are running the script on the iron Ruby Docker image, uh, just Ruby hello.rb. So uh, very simple execution despite the long kind of um, blob there. So let's uh, run this guy. Cool. So that looks successful. Uh, I got a response back from Mailgun saying that my message has been queued. And if I was to go to Mailgun, visit my logs, and Mailgun stops being slow. <laughs> Uh, come on, Melvin. I believe in you. All right. Well, we'll let Melvin do its thing. Um, usually, it's a little bit snappier, but basically, you would see an email just got sent uh, from our local uh, test here. Ah, there we go. Yeah. So we can see that an email was sent at 2:24 uh, Eastern Time, uh, today's date, to Steve Z uh, with the subject "Hello." So our test worked. Uh, we can verify that. That's good. Now that we've got working code, uh, we just need to zip this whole directory up and send it off to Iron. So the way you do that is zip dash r. The r basically just says zip everything recursively, which means we're going to get the bundle directories as well. Uh, I'll name it hello zip. And then the dot basically uh, is the directory you want zipped up. That's the current directory. I'd run that. Um, you can see actually up here, I've already created hello.zip, so I don't actually need to run this command again. Uh, <clears throat> so once you've got your zipped file, uh, then the next step is actually on this Docker worker uh, page as well. So you'll go to iron worker upload and uh, upload this guy. So this is also a step that I've already done just to save some time. But basically you would see a screen appear uh, and then uh, hello.rb would be uploaded uh, to your hud.iron.io account. So uh, I've already performed that so I can actually just visit hud here, same place I got my key from, and I'll click into this worker area. So see that this friendly getting started page. Uh, this is nice if you're new to Iron Worker. Uh, I've already added some code, so I'm just going to skip it and go to tasks. And under tasks, I can see that my file successfully uploaded as hello. Uh, and if I click in, I can see additional information about uh, you know what's happening here. So I can see uh, you know I've already tested this uh, twice running in production. Uh, I can cancel tasks. 
Uh, there's also some, uh, you know, information about the code that's actually uploaded here. So, you know, you can see there's a revision number. Uh, if I was to upload this uh, package again, uh, basically using the same command line, you'd see that revision number increment. Um, so you can basically keep track of what's happening with your code. You can archive code. You can download the latest revision to inspect uh, what's happened on production locally using those same uh, Docker commands. Um, and then I can click in to get kind of more detailed information on uh, what's happening with this right now. Uh, so basically the way this is set up to work is every time we pass a message to uh, our worker system, uh, the worker will spin up to its max concurrency. In this case, it's uh, five workers running in tandem. Um, and then uh, start sorting messages out to each of those uh, you know, workers that are on queue. So if I queue up five messages, uh, you might see you know, more than one worker spin up to try and keep up with that sort of activity. So let's uh, do that really quick. So the command to do that is just this simple uh, command here, iron worker queue, uh, name of the payload file, and then uh, name of the code that you want the payload to be sent to. So my code project is just called hello, and I'm going to requeue this hello payload.json. Uh, let's change this a bit to be from the cloud. And let's run this guy a few times. Cool. So you can obviously set up script to queue, uh, you know, hundreds of messages at the same time. I'm just doing this manually real quick to uh, show that messages are uh, kind of flowing in. Uh, and if we refresh this page, oh, okay, we can see uh, all of our messages have actually already shipped. So it's hard to catch it. Uh, in the act, kind of spinning up additional workers, but uh, if I click in, I can see kind of details about each message that was sent. So, um, like clicking into this top guy, show me exactly what command was executed, uh, what the payload was, uh, and this is really useful if there was an error with one of these messages, say uh, there was a malformed email address or uh, I received a bounce back from one of these email addresses. My code was set up to, uh, you know, run all that stuff. I could kind of drill into the details here and basically all the other 10,000 emails that I was sending would continue to send fine. Uh, just that one process that had issues would uh, have a bad status up here. So, um, you know, additional information is available in the log. Uh, so I can see this was the actual output from the command. Uh, so it's all there waiting for you, uh, neatly organized in the iron hub. Um, cool. Yeah, so uh, that's basically it in a nutshell. This is Iron Worker. Um, once again, the quick kind of in a nutshell description of it is uh, it's a nice way to run your code, uh, high throughput, uh, high availability, uh, highly asynchronous. Um, and you can see there's nothing special to my Ruby script. Uh, that I put together today. Uh, it's basically just a simple loop uh, that's going to email a bunch of customers. If I had added 10,000 emails, this would take forever for me to run locally. Um, but because of the way Iron Worker works, uh, you know, it takes much less time uh, for us to chop that up and kind of run it in the cloud. Um, cool. So uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel Feel free to type those into the chat and I'll uh, start looking at those guys. Okay, well, I assume uh, the silence means we don't have any questions. Uh, hopefully the chat and everything is working there. Uh, basically, if you have any questions after the call here, any additional information you need, uh, feel free to email me at paul at iron.io. I'll type that in right now. 
Uh, and yeah, I uh, hope everybody has a great day. Uh, so if you want to try this out yourself, uh, you just need this IronIO account, which is free. Um, and yeah, basically the page you want to go to is this page right here, this uh, github.com iron-io uh, docker worker page. And that'll get you started. Um, you can see we support a number of different languages, Elixir, Go, Java, Mono. Uh, basically all the big uh, popular ones that are out there right now. Uh, we're dedicated to supporting. We have a bunch of folks that run on uh, .NET uh, too. So um, yeah, if you have any uh, questions about getting started with any of those guys, uh, feel free to reach out to me. And yeah, happy Thursday, everybody.